So, Dr. Mwamba, I mean, the big question is, what made you go down, get on a plane, travel to India to see what Dr. Negan was doing? I'll say the first thing uh, that uh, made me travel over there was that uh, I had a phone call from uh, Dr. Nigam's representative from uh, Europe who asked me to go there. And uh, when I asked him, I say, uh, are you sure about what he does? Yeah. And he said, yeah, it's 100% open to share what he's doing as far as uh, uh, technique about uh, hair doubling. And for a long time, I've been following, I've been trying also to find a solution about hair regeneration, especially the donor area. Right. As we know that uh, one of the big problems we are facing today in hair transplant is about the donor, how to manage our donor to make it possible uh, all the design, all the hairline the patient likes to do. And sometimes we have those limits. Well, that's that's so really that's, that's always been one of the biggest issues. I mean, that is, you know, I mean, you you, you really don't have uh, enough supply to meet the demand for most patients. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I've been looking for a long time about uh, door to go works, you know. And then uh, I've seen like, uh, and lately, Dr. Nigam appeared, you know, in the different forums. There, but They've been talking about uh, what he does. Are you kidding? I mean, he uh, appeared. It was like magic. He came out. He came out of the blue. All of a sudden, yeah. it's all about Dr. Negum, and he was really, you know, I mean, he took the bull by the horns, and he chose to uh, to go on the forums, and you know, listen, I've been around for a long time, and we have seen a lot of nonsense, a lot of shenanigans on the forums. So, of course, initially, I have to look at everything with a jaundice eye. I have to look at everything and think to myself, well, this guy is relatively new to the field. He really hasn't been performing surgical hair restoration for too long. Um, I have spoken to some physicians um, who he has seen and spoken with, and they have told me that he really didn't really know much about hair transplantation. So my first thought is, how does this guy come out of nowhere, and all of a sudden he has found the solution that everyone has been hoping for, the holy grail for surgical hair restoration? But with that said, I was intrigued myself. So we allowed the conversation to go on, on obviously, baldtruthtalk.com, uh, and we allowed the interest to grow. But the one thing that I asked Dr. Negan was not to promote his practice, not to try to solicit people to come to India to have this procedure done, because until the proof is in the pudding, you know, frankly, it's something that we can't endorse. So this is why it's, it's pretty exciting that a guy of your stature and they're already talking about it online that an IAHRS member decided to take a closer look at this. So it's, uh, you know, I, I don't want anyone to get overly excited because like, like you, you and I, when we communicated, you know, you, would, you were pretty clear when you said at this stage, you can't really say if this stuff works or not. Yeah, definitely. Uh, as I say, what was important is like you, you know, Dr. Negan was not uh, like all the hair transplant that we know, surgeon or all the famous guys working on that because we know that uh, anthocytex, adherence have been working on yeah. the stem cell stuff. So it's not like something new, but it came up with a claim like 100% sure it's working. Yes. So now when they contacted me and they say, we want to you to come and see by yourself so it's kind of this uh this doctor is so sure that you know he's willing somebody to come and uh, and look at closely what he has to do so then i, I say because uh the other problem we have is like being in the field for a long time sometimes we fix some limits but yes. somebody who is new sometimes they see what we don't really see I think that's a really, um, uh, that's an open-minded attitude, and I, I really, I, I personally really appreciate that, and I know that the uh, hundreds of thousands, if not millions at this point, of people who are visiting Ball Truth uh, Talk every month are watching this very closely and appreciate your efforts a lot. So I think that's a great way of thinking, because most guys that I speak with are like, you know, this guy's a charlatan, there's no way this is going to work, 
my whole thing is listen you know let's let's let the, the truth come out it always comes out in the wash eventually so let's let this conversation happen so I think that's a great attitude I'm sorry I cut you off go ahead yeah and then uh, when I went there of course uh, what was the conversation even though I had with him was uh, I know that technically like uh, airline design and so forth is not yet up to uh, what uh, I would say the big guy in the industry are providing right but uh, I told him this is great what you're doing and as I, I told you in my email I was convinced first by first of all the principle how he set up his protocol he was very clear with me and we follow because I've been also working on this for a long time so uh, the principle was kind of clear and so he showed me and explained to me a little bit the technical part of how he does that and what is his idea even though for the future then I see it really makes sense and I think it can bring us to some types of solution but what I told him like first of all the first thing we have to clearly uh, I would say retrain your team about you know some basics about uh, because we cannot prove a technique if the result doesn't reflect what we are claiming right. not only in terms of growing hair because the proof that hair doubling or uh, stem cells produce hair is out there already. We know that when you put a, a dermal cells uh, plus epidermal cells, you culture them, they will provide a new hair. Right. That is known. It's not like a new stuff. Correct. But what we want to, to bring is, can we, with that technology, bring the hair transplant to where we can assure patients that we can provide aesthetic and cosmetic results and having those part of uh, what has been told uh, at the cellular level to happen in the in the real life. So it means like if we put like uh, uh, 3,000 grafts, of course we will have 3,000 in the donor area and the guy will not uh, worry about that. So I say this is what we have to, to bring up to, to, the, to the public. Right. We need to follow certain protocols and as I say, uh, I saw two patients, five patients, he told me this is the patient. And I saw them and I look at them and I say, uh, okay, I cannot say no because I'm seeing those patients. What I saw in the patient that uh, came to me, uh, because the patient, first of all, didn't tell me that he had something done in terms of air dubbing. He just said, oh, I had a procedure with Dr. Nigam. So I look at it, say, oh, you are at the three month level and I saw hair growing and I look at the donor area, uh, I didn't see any type of white dot or stuff like that. Right. So I say, oh, okay. I say at three months, this level, it starts to grow. This is kind of great because at three months, hair grow like this, it's okay. Then I went uh, with the patient because it's a patient from France. Uh, and we traveled back because he told me like he had to have the hair multiplication, but he was concerned. He wanted me to do a FUE, a regular FUE case, but do the doubling in the donor area because that's what was interesting. Right. So when we went there, they told me like by Dr. Nigam, so the patient had the hair doubling stuff. And then I said, oh, so if he had the hair doubling, so what I'm seeing uh, in the recipient area are the hair that you double say yes it's not a regular fue and then in the back so i said oh so it seems to work because in the front and the back i witnessed uh those hair growing but do you know so what say, do you know what technique that he used for this particular patient he used the in vitro the in vitro hair doubling. okay so like they, they pull up the graph they cut it in bisected it and then put uh, half of them in the recipient and the other half back in the dog. Right. Now, how and, is he, uh, and, 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 and I'm, I'm going to let you finish finish your thought, but I mean, how is he bisecting this graft? I mean, is he trans, he's, he's not transecting the graft. He's cutting yeah, it. He's he's split, he, what interested me in, uh, that's one of the key points that uh, lead me to kind of uh, went to Dr. Uh, Niga was his transected graft. It's not like, uh, you know, they were saying like, uh, uh, if you follow Dr. Go, it's a longitudinal cut where you kind of figure out how can he transect longitudinally a small graph. But with Negan, you say he is just doing a 
transaction. So basically, you're, just, you're, you're, you're removing the graft through tra traditional FUE. You are transecting it outside of the body in a Petri dish and then replacing yeah. the, the bulb. Are you replacing the bulb in the, in the donor and then the transected top into the recipient? Yeah, you can do both, right. actually. Uh, that's what it is. But it transected it at the amber level. So, you know, it's just like the level just uh, above the, the derma papilla. Right. And then at that level, it assures that the bottom part will reproduce a hair. It's like a flat hair. And then the upper part, you can do it either in the donor or in the recipient. But then what is interesting for him to assure 100%. That's where he had all the media and the DP cells. Dermapapilla says that he had that from uh, either the scalp or even though he used the body hair to get the Dermapapilla cells that he select. So, so it was kind of interesting to see because practically it becomes very easy because anybody can transect a hair. So now the key is all the, the stem cells production and everything that he adds together to make it uh, provide uh, new hair. Now, uh, what's interesting about that is, uh, at least according to, uh, you know, when people, you said you were following Dr. Goh's protocol, uh, he claims that he has a, has a proprietary, um, uh, he calls it a fertilizer solution, but a solution where he's putting the grafts in. And um, this doesn't sound like that's the same thing. It sounds like basically Dr. Negum is using your own body's, you know, cells. Yes. It's using your own body cells. So, that, so, basic, so it, basically anybody can, once they're trained, anybody could use this. There's no, uh, there won't be any issues with uh, the FDA uh, here in the States. There won't be any, any issues with any type of proprietary solutions that may need to be used. This is like, if you're trained to do this, you can do it. Yep. That, that was, uh, was appealing to me. It's like, you can use it with what we have already done in the U.S. or here in Europe. Right. So the, the, the key uh, is, is like you have to use like uh, your, your own body, stem cells, the DP cells, but uh, and using the growth factors like uh, the ECM, uh, I've been using SL, PRP. So it had that mixture that it does and that's kind of uh, lead him to to, to produce uh, the result like he's claiming. So yeah. that's what was interesting me because it was like, we almost know that we're using the ASL, we're using the PRP, but this guy uh, with uh, our own cells that you kind of uh, promote with uh, everything that we have been using can do the hair double with like an easy technique. That so now that was the first part that uh, I was interested in too. And then, of course, the hair multiplication, that's another story because here in the state and I think uh, here in Europe, we are not allowed to culture cells and uh, re-inject them in, uh, in human beings. Right. But the hair doubling part is totally possible with what we have been doing right well, now. Well, listen, that, that alone, the hair doubling part alone, you know, if you can double the donor area, if you can go back in there, even though there's going to be some microscopic scarring, around uh, the, the graft once it's placed back into the scalp, obviously. It can probably be used at least one more time, maybe even twice. Even, even though twice, yeah. Yeah, so uh, being able to double or triple the donor area is huge. That is monumental in this field. So if, this, th if this is what Dr. Negum has been able to accomplish, and with your help, and you're able to kind of catapult this concept uh, and get it into the right hands, then it's going to be a game changer. And that, you know, and listen, you are a really respected guy in this field. You are obviously part of the IHRS. Uh, the reason that I am looking at this even more closely is because of your interest. And I think the entire world, the hair loss community, is going to feel the exact same way. So, you know, initially, to be honest, you know, Dr. Negum didn't necessarily come out online in, in a way that I would say most. Uh, scientists would as far as wanting to present their their information to to the medical community but with that said maybe it was effective because he got your interest you know and, 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 and he got you interested in you know and taking this even further I think there's gonna be a lot of people who are gonna be really excited about this once they see the interview 
My only concern is, well, I have a couple of concerns. One is, I think you made a good point. When I saw some of the images that Dr. Negan posted on Ball Truth Talk uh, from, uh, I think it was the French patient, and I saw the actual work, I was a little concerned. I was concerned for the patient. I was also concerned, you know, if this is a technique that will, you know, eventually come to fruition, you're right in thinking that the procedure has to be done correctly. The basics, the basic hair transplant has to be done correctly if you're going to prove this concept and uh, get it out there for public consumption. Otherwise, listen, Dr. Orentreich uh, proved uh, the theory of donor dominance, but you saw what those guys were doing back in the, in, the, in the 60s and 70s to people's scalps. We don't want a repeat of that. Yes. That, that's what, like, uh, definitely what uh, our partnership, like uh, when I told Dr. Negan, has to be. Uh, is pretty much a researcher, you know, very, very concerned about all the science behind, uh, and he's very excited. When you see him, you can feel the passion about, you know, all the stem cells. Well, let me but tell you, that, pa him, that like, passion is palpable. That like a quality control uh, procedure where we can really make sure that we're doing this the, in the right way, with the right technique, and then to reproduce what is working over there in another facility because scientifically if you you claiming something it has to be reproduced somewhere else with the right. same conditions and only at that point we can start to confirm and say this is sometime uh, sometime uh, some type of procedure that has a, uh, a place to be in the in the hair field well yeah but your your gut feeling is that uh there's something to this and you're going to take it upon yourself to really research it correctly in your own facility correctly yeah definitely that's you know i mean that that says a lot you know dr negum contacted uh, my staff and asked about you know he wanted to apply to the ihrs and like i tell everybody hey, listen i would love to take people's checks but i mean he he's not at the point where we can bring him on board because he's not at, at least at this stage really a um, uh, a guy who's been doing hair transplants to the same at the same uh, level as you guys, and he's relatively new. Yeah. You know, so I love the idea that this technology is going to get into your hands, and that you're going to be able to really, if it works, you know, catapult this idea across the board, and everyone will be able to do it. Europeans, Americans, it could eventually be part of the gold standard. I mean, is that something that you're hoping for? Yes, that's something we are hoping because I've been every time, you know, uh, uh, at the beginning of many, many steps, like a changing step in the in the field, you know, even though when we started with the FIT, FUE. Right. And you can sense if something can bring to some uh, somewhere, but yes. it takes dedication. It takes really serious uh, work. And that's what I, I was trying even to make Dr. Negan to understand, like, Hair is very complicated, and many people have been trying, but if you are focused and if you are really systematic in what you're doing, the principle has been proven, so the thing is hard to get to a point where uh, we have a protocol that can be reproducible. And I think with hard work and uh, myself, as I said, I usually like to do things like uh, in details and uh, and. Um, I'm feeling like uh, this is something that can bring us somewhere. That's why like, I want to jump on it and uh, and really, really follow. And I like also the fact I was surprised, like when I asked Dr. Negan, say, we never heard about you. How long have you been doing this? So I'm a new guy. It's yeah. like two years. I say, ah, maybe because we need those new guys with new ideas that maybe we do not have. Uh, because we feel like this can work or cannot work. Well, and, and I appreciate uh, that. You know, and I, and I also appreciate his newness to the the hair loss community because you got to tell him, you got to say, listen, man, you can't go on the message forums and fight with guys because it's not going to get you anywhere. Just present yes. your pr present your stuff, get it out there the best way you can. You know, he's going to prove his concept when it's time. You know, when it's time, yeah. So I mean, I see how excited he gets, and he gets offended by. You know, anonymous people on a message form. You know, he's got to step back, realize he's a physician, and he should not be in the trenches trying to battle it out there and prove himself 
on a message for him because now he has somebody like you on his side and, and hopefully there'll be others. Yeah, hopefully. I can say we start like a tool, we will develop that technique and uh, technology. And as I say, we will see that on the research part, as I say, and on the uh, surgical part, because surgical part is very, because that's what people wait. Yes. You know, the research people usually follow, but they're not very interesting into it until it becomes very practical. And that's what I say, that's where we have to work hard. And in the practice, I kind of have some experience. That's what I say, I can help you to kind of bring what you are feeling in the research to see if it can really work in the, in the practical manner. Yeah, it's like, it's, like a, it's like having a ghostwriter. You have an idea for a book and you know it's going to be a best-selling book, but you can't write. You know, you, hire, write. You, you work with somebody who can, who can put your thoughts on paper. On paper, definitely. You got it. Yeah, and that's, that's listen, what we're doing right now. That's exciting, man. That 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 really is exciting stuff. And I know that people who are going to be watching this interview are going to be completely rooting for you. And the fact that it's in in somebody's hands like yours, that's what's really exciting to me. Now you mentioned hair multiplication. Let's talk yes. about that. Hair multiplication. Uh, when I uh, of course, when I heard about what he, he was claiming about the hair multiplication, it just reminded me a little bit to what uh, uh, adherents were saying, like, you know, you can uh, uh, culture those, those cells and re-inject them and reproduce hair. And the same thing like what I, I've seen in him and comparing to what he explained to me, it's just like the hair doubling stuff the same principle has been applied to hair multiplication, but it's just like you wait a little bit the timing. So one thing that's kind of, I was kind of telling him, like, we have been seeing this, it's very hard to prove that it's working because I don't know how many million of hair you need to make sure like you will regrow all the hair. So they have kind of a, a protocol that for me seems a little bit, uh, correct it's just like we cannot claim that it works on everybody but because uh even though the patient i saw he was kind of very very amazing uh, the result uh, i i witnessed the way they do the protocol say hey we will do the, the, the air multiplication stuff if it works you'll be gone if it doesn't work then we will retrieve and do the classic hair doubling and FUV stuff. Right. So it gives the patient, like, uh, it's like when we have the patient, uh, you tell him, okay, go on my Noxidil and Propecia for six months or a year. If it works for you, maybe we would not have to intervene and do the surgery. Right. But if at least it doesn't regrow hair, because we know that it just do that in 5% of patients, then we know that it will stabilize your hair loss, then you can uh, benefit from a surgery. And then, uh, and I think at the beginning, especially for young people who are telling them, take medication for a year, then do surgery. You know, obviously hair multiplication is the holy grail. He talks about the different ways he performs hair doubling. There's in vitro, there's in vivo. And then he, he brings up um, um, de, uh, de novo, which yes. to me means you're creating a whole new follicle. That means from the beginning in Latin, right? Yeah. So, I mean, explain the differences and how he's able to promote these differences in his practice. Uh, in practice, I will say uh, the in vitro, it's the classic transection. You transect your hair uh, while the hair is out, and then you re-inject them, and uh, they reproduce... Uh, uh, those two hair. Right. The in vivo, it's like you are doing the transaction without removing the hair. And that's and so that's what go is that's what like, go is attempt has been attempting to do. I'm or, sorry. They, and that's similar to what go is claiming to do. Yeah, to do. And uh, the way uh, he explained to me the way to do the transaction uh, in vivo, uh, it's kind of I will say. For somebody who does FUE and who know how you can do it, especially 
it will bring people to work under magnification because without magnification you cannot see what you're doing right it's like what we we're claiming with fit you have to have magnification to see the direction of it so you have to have a clear view where you can go and cut at the level that it's required to, to transect your hair so you can have uh, a chance to have that uh, upper part, the transected hair that will go and put it back in the in the resident area. So of course he has been talking also about implementing some microscope uh, inside the follicle, but with uh, like the regular loops that we use, like in FIT in magnification, uh, you can do it because uh, we have been having the technique to work like even in the black people when I'm working with them you have to look at really the direction of your hair. Right. So if you can be able to see the, the direction of your hair, you can get in and cut at the level that uh, uh, it's required at the amber level. So you have that possibility. So the in vivo part, it's doable. I like Even though I, I told him like, oh, for me, I don't even don't need the microscope really. What do you tell him to put a, a micro microscope in the in the punch, right. I think I can make it uh, technically. So the, the novel, uh, because the novel, everybody is kind of, ah, oh, it's a new hair follicle. But the, the novel, it's a little bit what we're doing today. It's like you're taking your hair follicle and then you're expecting like you have some stem cells that stay in. And then you have to just like what we do today, even though with the ASL and PRP, you remove your hair follicle and then you inject the SL and PRP, hoping that it's those stem grow. cells that stay there can regrow. But now what it does is just in, 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 instead of hoping that you still have stem cells, bring stem cells, dermapapilla cells and epidermal cells. Right. That, that you can get from the beard, that you can get from another uh, stem cells uh, uh, pool that you can have. And then from there, you can reproduce a new hair. And this is something that's been produced even though in culture. You know, when they did like those, uh, you mix the derma papilla cells and the epidermal cells in a, in a patch and then they reproduce a hair. So the bringing epidermal cells and derma papilla cells, we know that it's trichogenic. So what he's saying, instead of hoping that you have some stem cells stay inside, bring the stem cells, the growth factors, and all the other stuff, and you can reproduce a new hair. Okay, so uh, what, and what are your thoughts on that? Obviously, theoretically, it sounds great, but do you think that but it's something... But in practice, that... that's, that's what I want to see. That's what yeah. I, I told him, like, I want to do that in my clinic because I've been using it. I have regeneration in my clinic, maybe 20% with the, what I'm using, uh, ASL and, and, and PRP, but uh, of course, like Dr. Cole claiming to have like 60% of regrowth. So we know that you can uh, reproduce, but the problem is like he's claiming 100% by adding uh, DP cells and uh, some epidermal cells in it. So that's the part that I was kind of, okay, I want to see that. I want to do it in my clinic because it's something we, we have been doing. But we are we will be we never be able to tell patient hundred percent sure. Right. But only twenty, fifty. So some patients are trying that. But now if it's a hundred percent, then you know, uh, we hit the home run over there. Oh, it's a hundred percent. It's game over. Yeah. That's it. Goodbye, hair loss. You know, it's, it's, people will have the confidence to know that if they have the money to get this done, they'll be walking around with a full head of they'll hair be, one day. They'll be walking. Yeah. So I say we need to look at it and. Uh, uh, Frank Protocol. And what also I liked uh, with uh, the idea of the Nigam, and I think he's, uh, he's really researching, I said, okay, I will bring a patient of mine here from Brussels. I traveled with him, and he did a surgery on him. So I didn't even do that type of patient. Say, do the, the hair multiplication and do this stuff, and I will follow this patient. Because I've been there seeing what you're doing, and then I will follow the patient and see if really we can see what you're claiming is true. And we did a surgery on the, uh, on the patient, so I've been following that patient. So it was also, the, the fact that he was so open and so sure to work even on somebody, he never know. 
So I bring somebody that says, well, do this on me, and I will follow him, and I will tell you what I'm seeing. Well, I'm going to give, I'm going to give Dr. Negum um, some props for that, because I think that that says a lot. It really says a lot. It says a lot. A couple, you know, he's either incredibly confident or he's out of his mind. And uh, according to you, it appears that what he's doing has merit. So his confidence, you know, it's not false confidence. He really believes in what he's doing. So that's exciting. And I love the fact that he's open about it. He's not keeping it close to his vest. And he's, you know, I mean, uh, from what I understand, he's, he doesn't want to necessarily share it with uh, his local competitors, which... You know, I mean, whatever. That's uh, that's up to him. But the fact that the rest of the world can get their hands on this, uh, if in fact this comes to fruition and it works the way that you're hoping all the, all these techniques work, then that's wonderful. That is and will be a game changer. But when I'm thinking about it technically as a as a layman, it kind of seems to me that you know the in vitro would be. You know, a, a really practical way to get the same job done as the in vivo. You're still ca causing some form of scarring when you're going in there, you know, and, and, and bisecting it within the body. So why not take it out and really get a good look at it and then replace it back into the donor and into the recipient? I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, my thought was uh, close to what you said. I think like the in vitro compared to the in vivo, I didn't see really, really... Uh, that much uh, of benefit from the uh, in vivo because but in the other hand uh, the only thing like with the in vivo if you compare to the in vitro is with the in vitro when you remove a, a, like let's say a, a follicle and then you have to re implant them you are not sure like those will stay in the donor area. Sometimes you can have some oozing that can bring out the, the, the follicle that you re implant. That's, so a, you that's can a good lose point. Some follicle. But with the in vivo, because you don't remove that, you know that the donor area for 100% it will regrow. And then you move the other part in the recipient area. That's the only advantage of the in vivo. But of course, technically, it will take like a little bit more timing and everything. But if really the in vitro works and you can assure that the graph that you put back in the donor can stay there, then uh, I think it's comparable. But sometimes, you know, uh, people want 100% assurance. Then you say, right. okay, if I don't remove it, it will grow. So let's do the in vivo. So Dr. Negum is, in your opinion, definitely onto something. Yes. So, I mean, so do you think that uh, in your experience, and you've seen it all, you've been around for a long time, Doc, uh, not that you're old, but you've been in the industry for at least as long as I have, I think, for about, what, 15 years or so, close to that? Yeah, 13. 13, 13 years. Um, I mean, do you think that this is going to be uh, part of the next evolution of surgical yeah. hair restoration? Yes, that will be the next part. And that's why even though I've been looking into uh, this uh, technology for, I would say for a while, it's not like something that I just woke up yesterday and say, okay, let's do Because when I look at all the techno all the, the solution we have, this is kind of the last key of the channel that we have to hit before we really we, we, we can say like, now we, are, we have been doing great. So... Uh, definitely, uh, by looking at what Nigam is claiming and is doing, I think that's everybody's looking into that direction right now. So you, so you think at this point, uh, Nigam's work is the work to watch? Yes. Okay. Now, how are we going to get him? To, how are we going to get him to do a decent hair transplant? That's what that's what I wanted. Once that happens, then you know that's awesome. Then you know he can obviously uh, be a part of what we do. Uh, only obviously if if someone like yourself gives him the thumbs up. But you know my my concern is you know these young patients who are really desperate, who think that this is their only resort. When you know it may take it may take you a year or more to really give this the thumbs up. And I'm hoping that your you know, what you're going to be doing in your practice will be eventually presented, uh, you know, to the ISHRS. Are you considering that? 
Oh, yeah, they definitely. I, I think uh, what we're doing right now, uh, we have, of course, to do the work, but we have to present it to the community of uh, physicians who are colleagues. Because, as I say, when you want to prove a scientific uh, principle, you cannot just uh, totally uh, deal with patients. Because right. they, don't, they do not know. You can, you can, you can cheat them. You, know, That's right. you can tell them whatever they want to hear, and they will say yes. But when you go like before, like the community of like a physician, like the ISHRS, they will look at with the critics uh, high. And then if really you bring the, the proof that you have to do, and finally they agree about it, then you know that you make a step. Same thing as like when we started with the FIT, FUE. I remember, like, uh, I was going to some conference where you you will be the only one to, 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 to really believe what you're saying. Sure. The entire community is kind of, what is he talking about? Yeah. And you had to bring solid proof, patient uh, results, uh, you know, scientific proof that at one moment, you know, they will start to think twice. Well, look, it, it look hey, it, it only took the ISHRS 10 years to, to say, hey, you know what, this is real. This is so, real, yeah. <laughs> so so let, let's hope it doesn't happen uh, the same way with this. But listen, you know, the times have really changed. Uh, the hair loss community really, um, I think, drives the industry. And a lot of it has to do with the online hair loss community. And people like yourself who see what's going on online, and you happen to be contacted directly through Dr. Negum's office or through, you know, his, his European rep. But... You're probably watching it anyway, just like you said, you were watching what was happening with Dr. Go. Now, in your opinion, do you think that, I mean, whatever the mystery is with Dr. Go, do you think that's kind of going to be something that obviously is going to be put on the back burner? Not too many people are going to be watching that direction now that we have, you know, uh, that Dr. Negan was able to present this to you and, and basically open up his practice to you. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that most of the physicians who are performing surgical hair restoration are probably going to keep their eye on this ball instead of Dr. Go. Yeah, I, I do think so. Because, like, as I say, uh, when everything is, like, too much secreted, people doesn't understand really what's happening, uh, they will focus on what is practical possible. And if, like, uh, as I say, Dr. Nigam is, is kind of willing to propose something that is more practical and pe people can really, really... Uh, reproduce that in their own clinic with things that they also master, like when you talk about PRP, uh, about ECM, about all the growth factor, some physician master those uh, kind of fields. Right. So it will be easy for them to understand, to apply, and to kind of critic or to improve even the techniques, because that, that's what is important. It's like if you bring something that can work, other as to be able to improve it by their, you know, their expertise in some part of the field because you cannot be expert in everything. Now, since you think that this could be a game changer, um, do you think that in time that having the ability to regenerate as much donor area as something like this might be able to do, do you think that the strip procedure is just going to go uh, by way of the dodo, just going to be completely obsolete? If that works, street surgery will be a really, really uh, rare, I would say, uh, option to take. I, I do believe, like, if really the hair multiplication and uh, hair doubling works, street definitely will be really, really, for those who doesn't know how to do it. And anyway, they will have to learn to do it. Right. Yeah, that so, we learn. That we have to do it. So that's it. So, so, it's so, like so today, we don't do scalp reduction. Even though some physicians can still do scalp reduction, you know, but it will be in that in that area. And you're st you're still offering currently. You're still offering strip in your practice. Oh yeah, definitely. Because the, still right now we we need the strip because right. FUE it's limited in terms of what you can get. Right. You are very limited, and in like in some patient, like, like I would say, difficult patient like a black uh, black female, where when you use like a FUE procedure, you have really to master the technique to be able to to get uh, 
good graft. So those patients, you need to go back and do them a strip. So, so, not, so, not, strip. so not only will Dr. Negum's work and your work with Dr. Negum uh, potentially create, I'm not going to say unlimited donor, but you know, double or triple donor area, it will probably put an end to the strip as we know it today. Yeah, it, it will uh, definitely end up the strip. Now, that's a pretty heavy statement, and I think that that's going to, again, I'm using, I, I said exciting, you know, 10 times during this broadcast, but that's going to excite a lot of people. But I also think it's important for consumers to know and, and, and potential patients to know that at least at this stage, and you said it yourself, strip is still an option because FUE and FIT and, you know, that type of procedure has its limitations today. Today, yeah. But that that can change, and you know, I mean, that can change if uh, we can uh, really, really provide a solution for the donor area. Yeah, I think in a year time we'll be able to really, really know if uh, that procedure is uh, really on the good way. Because, like as I say, right now we have just to fix like some uh, setup. Because as uh, right now we know that at six month point you can be able to tell if like a procedure works or not. Because the majority of what we have been doing today. At six, seven months, you have seen a lot of duplication of results. So by starting right now in a one-year period, one year and a half, we should be enough to say like if this procedure works or if uh, we are still uh, far away from what we are expecting. Now, are you, so gonna be con are you gonna be concentrating on one aspect of the procedure or one way to perform the procedure, whether it's in vitro or in vivo? Uh, or are you going to be experimenting with uh, all the different options? I will experiment all the different options, but I will be focusing more on the de novo and the in vitro. Of course, the in vivo for me, it's like a lecture. I'm, I'm kind of, you can do it, but if the in vitro and the de novo works, why should I worry about the in vivo? Because the, the, the thing is just this. If the de novo works, I can take uh, uh, my hair, double that and double my recipient area because people are not very interesting as I usually say hair transplant is not about the donor it's about the recipient area people want fullness in the recipient area right if you can double the volume in the in the, in the recipient area and at the same time assure that the donor it's uh, preserved uh, can reproduce is preserved that's the game changer of the day yeah because that I don't need the, the, the in vivo. I just need to take that graph in vitro, double that, double my volume in the recipient area, and the donor will take care of my recipient, uh, my donor area. So the, the in vivo for me is kind of the last from those two. That's why I will focus more on the in vitro and the donor. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's ama it, sounds, it sounds like science fiction at this point. Yeah. I but you know, you seem you seem pretty confident, Doc, and I obviously have a I obviously have a great deal of respect for for your opinion, and so do yeah. so many other people who are going to be watching what, this. What, I, what I've seen, uh, and because of my reading and my own research, I, I felt that oh, we are into something big. We need just to restructure that and put some uh, you know hard work and uh, I think uh, uh, really really share about it and and see how we can put. Uh, my gut feeling is just like uh, this is really, really. As a scientist, we have to prove it to be objective in what we're doing, and sometimes to realize that it can take time. Yes. And, and but we we need to be open. And as I say, if you are not open, then you will not change. But we have to be open. And as I say, usually I tell my patient this can happen tomorrow, but you have just to be ready. Because, uh, like one thing, let's say if this. Uh, technology works tomorrow it's totally different in, in the one year period uh, uh, it's gonna be a great great change a great like a hundred uh, hundred eighty percent degree of change and uh, and I would, I, would hope, I, would, stuff. I would hope that everyone in the industry would want to embrace this because it's only going to help them it's not going to harm their practices. It's only going to enhance their practices. To improve it. Yeah. yeah it's, and yeah, let's talk about the bottom line. There's going to be a lot more money involved as well. So, I mean, no one, because uh, there's a lot of misinformation out there where 
the, the consumers online believe that somehow the people in the industry want to stop this type of technology from ever hitting the masses. That is that could be further from the truth. And I think that you are proof positive of that because you are one of the leaders in the field. You've been doing this for quite a long time and you're totally open to change. And you're you're open to change for you know the the, the main reason that this could be something that is really going to help a lot of lives, which is great. Yeah. I think that's great. And as I say, uh, what is important, even though when you look even though to the money stuff and uh, saying like, this will kill the street, but uh, we are experts in hair. And uh, as I usually say, hair is not only about scalpel and surgery. You have to take care of the patient entirely. The patient, when they come, you have to advise them about medication they have to take. You have to help them psychologically. Right. Because some people, uh, as I usually say, hair transplant has to be a benefit, not something like you, it kills you. So you have to make them understand that if it doesn't work, try to live with that. But if it works, it's like you make a gift to yourself. That's right. So if you bring them in the psychology part, you bring them confidence in the techni technical part, where they can trust you that you can provide uh, the technical. And guess what? You do hair multiplication, you don't have to do a, a surgical uh, technique, but what they will do? They will come to you to perform that biopsy that can bring them the multiplied hair that you will have to re-inject them. So the job will still be for us. That's right. Anyway. And, and that's exactly, I'm glad that you said that and that's out there now for public consumption because that's what the consumer has to understand. Your attitude is, you know, many people in the field have the exact same attitude. They're not afraid of innovation because they know that people are going to be going to them anyway. Because these guys, you guys are the experts. The IHRS surgeons are the experts, the guys that have been doing this with the best and most consistent results for the longest period of time. Why would you go elsewhere? So I'm, I'm glad that you said that, that there's no fear of change.